Hey guys, thanks for staying with us on Astro Avani. My name is Said Fradino Omar and you are joining me in a special episode of In Realty because today we talk about art. No, art. Why should we care about art? Well, you know, you've got your nice house, you've got your great furniture. Wouldn't it be great to actually have great pieces of art adorning your beautiful home? And when we talk about art, the first thing that a lot of people think about is this. Can I afford it? Well, if you look at the internet and you come across uh, prices like $1.2 uh, million uh, for uh, Van Gogh's um, vase with 15 flowers or $88.3 million for you know, the ever-famous turquoise Marilyn by Andy Warhol, people would think, can I really afford it? Well, here's the question that we are going to ask our guest for today, which is uh, Navin Gill, the Managing Director of Purple House. Navin, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Okay. Now, very simple question. Why should one invest in art, especially if we're looking at it from a, you know, from a home perspective? Well, um, essentially art is categorized as um, just an alternative form of investment. It's something new, you would say, uh, comparative to conventional forms of investment like, you know, it's a property and stocks and etc. etc. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is deemed as a, as a new investment class. And lately, as far as the Asian region is concerned, it's also considered as the fastest growing investment class. Mm -hmm. uh, with fastest growing investment class, you yeah, say? With, uh, essentially, that means you get, you get better returns uh, uh, on art than you would on any other form of investment. Right, okay. Uh, but is it accessible to begin with? Definitely. I mean, um, it's not structured per se, but um, uh, it's uh, getting... Well, if you're looking at the perspective of Malaysia, for that matter, it's uh, growing, mm -hmm. and uh, the availability, the exposure—it's all, it's all, it's all moving uh, along in tandem. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I would say that it would be affordable to almost any any category of people mm -hmm. who would want to start uh, an investment. Anything ranging from you can say a uh, thousand ringgit all the way up to hundreds of thousands or even into the millions right, okay. as far as Malaysian art is concerned. Yes. Yeah. And right. you have a good sample here in Purple House? Yeah? Yes, we have. We in fact carry the entire spectrum of, of pieces, right from uh, pieces that are just uh, from the lower ranges all the way up to the higher ranges. Right, yeah. okay. Now, okay, again, if you're looking at it from a, from a home perspective, uh, you've got your property and, and, and you want to choose art, but at the same time you don't want to choose art just so that you can adorn the walls, but it's also as a form of investment. What are some of the key considerations one should have when having this in mind? Well, I mean, okay, initially it would be obviously your, your budget. Mm -hmm. You have to set up uh, an amount. Right, start, yeah, that. <laughs> start with that and say, you know, how much do you want to spend on art, uh, you know, along with all your other <coughs> investments to create a, you know, a, a proper portfolio. Mm -hmm. So assuming you start with X amount and um, so that's that and then you will have to start zooming in onto the profiles of the artist on uh, how well exposed they are, mm -hmm. how they've progressed over the years, how their prices have been doing, mm -hmm. uh, the demand, you know, the versatility of the artist. Mm -hmm. um, these are all factors to consider. And um, so once you've narrowed down your choices, I mean, there are more than enough art galleries now in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. There are more and more opening as well. Mm -hmm. so it's good to, you know, go around, get exposed and see what is available. And that these are the... I suppose the main issues that you need to, to consider before you set up your own uh, art investment portfolio. So, are you saying that feasibility of investing in a piece of art largely depends on who did it, who painted it, who, who sculpted it? I would say yes. That Why? Would be, that would be the primary uh, thought in it. Because, um, well, there are lots of artists, but mm -hmm. not all of them are going to be well profiled. Um, a lot of them don't have exposure. Um, exposure is in they don't they don't have uh, they don't have exhibitions they don't they don't work together with galleries. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the sort of artists that maybe you know uh, may may take a slower um, time th yeah, a longer yeah, time a longer to, time to, 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 to gain get, exposure exactly. Okay. So um, looking at it along those lines, you can say that uh, the well-profile artists, you can see, I mean, we've noticed it's all been charted through mm -hmm. auctions and through uh, um, sales through galleries. So you can see year on year that these well-profiled artists have been, their prices have been steadily increasing over the years. So it's, 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 it's very, very evident now. Okay, well, here's uh, an Art Investment 101 for uh, the audience. Uh, give us some of the names uh, of, say, let's, let's break them into two batches, some mm -hmm. of the uh, more renowned, well-known Malaysian artists right. and those that one should be looking out for, the newer ones, the contemporary artists. Okay, um, as far as the uh, blue chip 
mm -hmm. pioneer artist uh, would be concerned. Uh, obviously, there is Dato Ibrahim Hussein, mm -hmm. who um, at this point in time is probably the highest transacting uh, Malaysian artist. Mm -hmm. um, then you have uh, Dato Chua Tien Teng, the father of Malaysian Batik. Mm -hmm. You have Abdul Latif Mohidin. Um, uh, especially his Pago Pago series, which mm -hmm. has fetched. Um, and these are people who, okay, like for example, Abdul Latif Mohidin, uh, last year his price, uh, his uh, Pago Pago series fetched 572,000 ringgit mm -hmm. at a uh, local auction. Uh, this year, Dato Ibrahim Hussein's work fetched 797,000 mm -hmm. at a Malaysian auction. And um, uh, you have our national laureate, Dato Sayama Jamal, mm -hmm. uh, whose pieces also, I mean, he just passed on last year. And um, yeah, these prices have uh, sort of moved up to 250, 300,000 for the larger pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the. So they know, actually go up to the hundreds of thousands. Oh, yeah, huh? definitely. But do we have any Malaysian artists that broken the million barrier? I suppose it has, mm -hmm. but uh, based on on uh, commercial commercial transactions through galleries, lah. But so far at an auction, the highest record ever done was uh, through seven nine seven. Yeah. Right. I see. Okay. What about contemporary artists? Those that we should be looking out for, and you you kind of ha have a feeling that these people are gonna Fair. have a good journey. Okay. Um, well, some of them who have um, okay, the really well positioned contemporary artists would be Ahmad Zaki Anwar. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jalani Abu Hassan and Bayu Tomo. These are three relatively well uh, positioned uh, contemporary artists which, which are worth looking out for. Lah. Okay, and for these artists, mm -hmm. what sort of entry prices are we looking at to, to um, their work? These would be, I mean, since they are relatively well profiled already, you'll probably be starting off at about, say, anything between seven to eight thousand. Seven to eight thousand. For a smaller piece. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can go up to about. 25-30,000. Right, I see. Okay. Uh, and if we go around, we see a lot of galleries with um, artists that are um, not necessarily well known. Uh, they probably have, you know, the first or the second exhibition. Yeah. Now, as an investment, are these pieces good to buy? Um, across the board, I mean, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. But then again, you have to... Uh, it'll be better if you could, you know, find out a little more detail about the artist because there would be artists who, who, who would pay it and, you know, have an exhibition and they may not follow through their career mm -hmm. over the next couple of years. If you go to any gallery, you will see that the lighting is, you know, is manipulated and, and the environment is, um, uh, there's a certain way that art is presented in galleries, yeah? yeah? Uh, and um, it seems to be because you need to preserve the art. Uh, for some reason, especially the older ones. Yeah. So when you choose an art to invest and you put it in your own home, are there things that you have to do to ensure, say, you know, the sustainability or you know that the art quality remains? Right. Uh, these are relatively minor technicalities because mm -hmm. um, essentially oil paintings and acrylic paintings do not really deteriorate whether you have any form of raw lighting or mm -hmm. sunlight. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to maintain relatively well. Um, batik paintings as well as watercolour paintings um, definitely should not be subjected to, to strong uh, spotlighting or sunlight, mm -hmm. uh, direct sunlight especially. And um, then again we have watercolours uh, which um, uh, have been stigmatised by a lot of people mm -hmm. that, who believe that you know it's uh, because in, in a tropical climate we have a lot of moisture and humidity that it would affect um, watercolour paintings which traditionally used to happen but mm -hmm. now um, there has been a system that has been pioneered where the piece of paper is actually floated and coated with uh, silver nanoparticles mm -hmm. so that sort of preserves it uh, for uh, you know permanently like, essentially does this go on before or after the watercolour? after after, after the watercolour right, right yeah. I see so this sort of preserves it uh, sort of like a clear coating yeah. for it then yeah. okay yeah. we've come a full circle now this is the final question at the beginning we asked uh, if um, it's feasible or not as a form of investment but here's an even bigger question you know we've established that you know it can cost this much and it can uh, again this much of uh, returns but is it a myth that art really actually is only an investment for people with high net worth? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, um, um, yeah, well, traditionally that was the, 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 the general thought in mm -hmm. art that, you know, it's only for the rich and famous. But um, 
yeah, it's getting more and more accessible to everyone now in all you know all different classes of people. Mm -hmm. And as you could start your art investment from as low as a couple of thousand of ringgit right now, and you will literally see the, the the value of it growing year on year. So it's actually open, but it's just that um, I suppose there's a lot of awareness, a lot of education that needs to be instilled into people, um, especially in this region, uh, to be more open to the idea of art as you know being as in, being a form of investment rather than the financial investment forms. Well, I guess the only thing that's left for me to do is actually to go and fork out the next um, five, six grand to look at uh, some new art pieces and start investing myself. You should definitely consider that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Navin, thank you so much thank for your you, time. Thank you. Well, that's it for me in the first segment. Uh, you're clued in now, so now the only thing that's left for you to do is to go out there and ask yourself what sort of art you like. In the second and third segment, you'll be with Lina Wati Anand and it's a very artsy episode of In Realty, so stay with us.